Alright guys and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be counting down the top 5 weird specs from the Raffle Lich King expansion. Just before we jump in guys, apparently only 11% of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel, so I would appreciate if people did actually quickly subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to see more content like this. So when it comes to doing my research for these videos, it can be a very difficult process because the old talent trees are literally impossible to obtain. The only talent trees that I can get are 2.4.3 talents for TBC or, you know, patch 3.35 talents for Raffle Lich King, the last talent builds for each of the expansions. The older talent trees are much harder to find. A lot of these builds are based off the old talent trees in Raffle Lich King and all I have to go off is really, really old forum posts, absolutely ancient pixelated YouTube footage and just talking to people generally in the community. So. Just bear that in mind when you're watching these videos. So if you're watching this video and you see that I've missed something very important out of one of these builds, then feel free to contribute in the comment section below. But anyway, let's get on with it. First of all, we have the Shadow Frost Death Knight. You can also nickname this build the Mage Death Knight because it basically turns the Death Knight into a much more of a ranged class. Your main source of DPS and pressure is going to be in the form of Icy Touch and Death Call. Should clarify, this is obviously a PvP spec in arenas and battlegrounds. Back then, like all the abilities just seem to do loads of damage for the UK. Like Icy Touch could easily do up to 3k damage. Even though it was supposed to be more of a filler ability or a preparation ability, it did still do quite a lot of damage because Death Knights were just that ridiculously strong during Wrath of the Lich King. So Icy Touch had an old glyph, which was quite hard to find actually, but I did manage to find it, which allowed Icy Touch to generate an extra 10 runic power. Okay, so one ability, if I consume one rune, would generate 20 runic power, and that's quite a lot. Originally, at one point, there was a damage reduction to Icy Touch included with this glyph, but the damage reduction was removed, and that's what really made this spec become more and more viable. So you'd expect to get Blood in the North or the Reaping Talent, which causes your Blood Strikes and Pestilence to turn Blood Runes into Death Runes, and then those Death Runes can be consumed with more Icy Touches. You've also got talents for optimise the Icy Touch and Death Cold damage, which allowed DKs to deal loads and loads of damage, loads of pressure, while not actually having to physically be in melee range, which means, obviously this means Death Knights were able to do a ridiculous amount of pressure while being kited by mages, warlocks and healers. One of the main disadvantages of playing a melee class is not being able to get into melee range to actually deal your damage. But one of the key aspects that's always made Death Knight strong is that they can actually deal pressure while not being in melee range. Obviously they've got their ranged abilities, they've got their dots ticking away at the target, and they've got their ghoul attacking the target too. And then apart from that, you would obviously use Play Strike as a little bit of a filler ability, and you also use Obliterate as more of an execute ability. And you always use Pestilence to spread as many dots as you possibly could, because your dots, again, Back in Wrath of the Lich King, they, did, they felt like they did more damage than they do on retail, in my opinion, just simply by the fact that each and every enemy has smaller health pools. And you also had the Unholy Blight Talent, which stops your diseases from being dispelled, which obviously increased your pressure even more. Unfortunately, this talent was totally reworked, so that Icy Touch no longer granted the extra runic power, it just gave you a slight increase to Frost Fever damage, which was it became more of a PvE talent, to be honest. That increase to runic power is actually really, really underrated and very powerful. For number two, we have the Warlock tank build, although it is a, a tank build, but it doesn't actually include the Warlock tanking, but the Voidwalker tanking, so it's a Voidwalker build. In Raffle Lich King, they introduced a pet avoidance mechanic, or whatever you want to call it, where pets would take less AoE damage from bosses, which was great because it meant that your pets didn't die all the time. On the Obsidian Sanctum boss fight, this was kind of exploited since all the dragons did AoE and Colonel fire damage, okay? And obviously people worked out that they could use the Voidwalker to tank the bosses because they took significantly less damage from AoE damage. And this AoE damage was so much that it could actually one-shot tanks if they weren't geared enough. But the Voidwalker could totally just soak the damage. I mean, you would expect to buff the Voidwalker's defensives with damage reduction like Soul Link, Master Demonologist, Demonic Resilience, then you spec for increased healing on your demon, like Fell Synergy, Improved Blood Funnel, stuff like that. Then you spec to increase the Voidwalker's threat, so DPS wouldn't pull threat off the Voidwalker, and obviously therefore increasing his damage. 
And you also picked up the cooldown demonic empowerment which increased a void walker's health by 20% and its threat generation. And lastly you could stack stamina gear on your warlock which would then actually increase the void walker's health pool to an even bigger beefcake and you could easily get your void walker with more health than actual tanks. For number 3 we have the Prot Ret spec which is a PvP paladin spec which combined ret talents and protection talents. You essentially became beefier with the protection talent, which meant that you didn't have to use as much PvP gear, so you could use more PvE gear that provided more DPS for the Paladin. You wouldn't use a two-hander, you would actually go for a one-hander and a shield, and use glyphs like Avenger Shield, which doubled its damage, but could only be used on a single target, and obviously that ended up hitting like a truck. Then you would get glyphs like Divine Plea and Glyph of Salvation to reduce your damage taken, which meant that you could easily survive in 2v2s and it's very difficult for you actually to die um, in double DPS comps. I think overall you did provide less pressure than a typical DPS class, but with the perfect combo and coordination with your arena teammates, you are absolutely lethal. And obviously in 3v3 games you provide excellent support because you're a paladin and you can do Hand of Freedom, Dispels, all that kind of juicy stuff. And if people were stupid enough to actually focus DPS on you, then they would massively waste their time. People on my live streams have told me that the first content that Towelie, the streamer, ever streamed was actually popularising the protection spec in PvP, so I found that quite interesting. For number 4 we have the Fury Tank build, so it's kind of similar to how Fury Tank works in Classic right now, although you will actually be using a two-handed weapon with a shield. Honestly, the main reason to get this build is because you just kind of look cool with a two-handed weapon and a shield, although it did actually become quite a useful dungeon spec if you really want to analyse it properly. Um, obviously, doing dungeons very quickly meant that you could farm your emblems very quickly, and emblems are always relevant in every single stage of Wrath of Lich King's lifetime, because you always need emblems to get gear, whether it's for you or your ult. And this was um, helped a lot by the fact that in Fury spec and uh, as a tank you did ridiculous damage. And this was largely because Fury spec had a lot of reactive damage buff talents, for instance in Rage which gives you a 30% chance on getting a 10% damage buff for 12 seconds after taking damage. So as you can probably imagine that was up absolutely constantly. It got Berserker's Stance and Berserker's Rage which generated Rage when you took damage. This meant that you had an infinite Rage pool to burn with Cleave and Whirlwind and other abilities like that. And obviously you had also a lot of damage increasing talents too. There's even a talent that increases cleave damage by 120% and that's pretty ridiculous. You pick up a few essential talents in the protection tree like shield spec, shield mastery so that you weren't too squishy and also the revenge talent to get even more AoE DPS and overall you could easily compete with a protection paladin on AoE DPS with this build and get those dungeons cleared very very quickly. When you get better and better gear in Wrath of the Lich King the heroic dungeons do become very trivial in my experience, so you really did not have to worry about dying in this kind of spec. And lastly we have the Rogue Repost spec. So this build kind of builds on the Rogue Tank spec from TBC where you could tank Gruul with the Avoidance Cap. I don't think the Avoidance Cap is achievable in Wrath of Lich King, but nonetheless you still could become a pretty strong tank. However, actually tanking raids probably was never going to happen. Of I don't know, maybe some people actually did it, but this build was mainly specialised for soloing Zulgarub and parts of Molten Core, obviously to get a truckload of gold. And, you know, very easy, a very easy farming method that didn't require you to compete with, you know, people in the open world farming elementals and stuff like that. So you specced into defensive talents to increase your avoidance like deflection, lightning reflexes, repost, ghostly strike, and sleight of a hand. Then you specced into talents that increased your damage, but also talents that buffed your damage from your dodges. Like for instance unfair advantage which would actually cause you to strike back with 100% weapon damage after a dodge, which meant it's kind of like the hacker slash or sword spec talent that would occur probably even more often than the actual sword spec talent because it's based on dodges and so that is a massive ridiculous DPS increase but obviously you don't really take advantage of that talent really when you're doing typical raiding because you're not actually going to dodge anything in a typical raiding environment but if you're soloing bosses then this is going to provide you with loads of DPS. 
You also have a talent setup which has a similar philosophy which added a combo point whenever you dodged. That's been in the game since Classic WoW and that is obviously a massive DPS increase because you can burn those combo points with eviscerates and the amount of combo points you're generating you know, per minute is massively drastically increased with this talent. Lastly, we have Cloak of Shadow Glyph, which reduces the damage you take by 40% when it was active, just a little bit of an extra damage mitigation boost. And overall, just a really strong spec at actually just, you know, soloing Zulgarub bosses. I haven't really, I don't know of a lot of specs that I can actually achieve this, especially when it comes to Molten Core bosses. I haven't heard, I've heard of people free manning Molten Core in Raffle Lich King, but soloing it, apparently it was possible according to research that I managed to find out. So overall a great spec for farming loads of gold. But anyway guys, my name is Metagoblin, until my next video, ciao.